Welcome back, drinkers of distinction. The four cans I've got left, I can't name off by heart. One's a brown ale at 6.2%. The next one is a fruit beer by, um, <clears throat> fruit IPA by Moondog at 7%. Next one is a red ale by Dayton, 10%. And the last one is by uh, is called Turnstiles. It's twelve percent. They're all four forty mil. So I just wanted to throw it out there. Probably won't be reviewing any of them today. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we got a Hawker's IPA for you. Now, well, I've done the stout, done the noodle doof, feeling good, nice and warm, nothing extravagant. But yeah, no, I don't think I'll be uh, getting into those today. Mmm, nice and fruity. You're just another victim in this devil's master play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice and golden. Mmm. Ooh. See, I had a Hawker's Hazy, but I didn't review it because I was pretty smashed at the time and just drank it. <laughs> so if I can get my hands on it again, I might review it. Then again, I might have already done it. I have no idea. Oh, look at that. Pretty as your missus on her fucking birthday. Hey? Look at that. Ain't too late round here, son. Oh, yeah. Slight musk notes. It's, it's almost like a bitter rose water. It's a slight floral note. That. And, it, it, and it, it's slightly dry, slightly bitter. It's got a nice kick but it's got a really nice floral note. Classic, refined, and shamelessly hopped, this IPA strikes a chord between bitterness, malt, and flavour, allowing its aromatic hop characters to play the melody. American and Kiwi hops lead the charge, delivering robust citrus and tropical notes while retaining stunning smashability. See, this is why I crap on about profiles. Because what I might consider to be borderline transcendent, someone like the gentleman I saw yesterday, who I shared the bar with, didn't like a beer that I loved. <laughs> and I can see the common sense behind brewers like Arnie Jack's having restrained flagship beers. I've got nothing against it. I'm not saying it's bad. But when you look at the dialogue that's out there about craft beer, not everyone's praising it. You know? And especially in business, you've got to base it off your critics almost more than your supporters. Because at the end of the day, a supporter is a critic in weight. You know, in other words, you're, you're as only good as your last dish, only good as your last brew. You know what I mean? They'll love you till they see a reason not to. I'm not saying everyone's that fickle, but that's, you know, that's the risk. Just because you like something, I mean, someone else is gonna. You know. So, you know, I'm not saying it to be a downer. I'm saying it because it's true. That's why I give honest recommendations. Me personally, love it. <clears throat> but it's it's fruity, it's bitter, it's dry, it's it's bold, not overly floral, but, yeah, the notes are definitely there. And that's why I say to people, if you like these particular profiles, I think you'll like it. If you don't, you, you don't have to. 
I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I'd, I'd, I'd rather try and be accurate than say to people, oh, yeah, go out and buy it. And then someone one day eventually comments and says, I didn't like this at all. You're a fuckhead. you got no idea what you're talking about. No, I just stick to the truth. But no, I, I reckon it's very enjoyable. Mmm, smells nice and sweet, but not like, you know, super powerful. See if there's anything hiding at the bottom. It's not a hazy. I don't expect there to be. Mmm. I actually find it quite restrained and quite balanced. Like, I really do. I, I think this is... It reminds me of Kelton Draft in the way that Draft is, you know, the normal standard beer for its school, and I would say the same about this, except this is ales, craft beer, not draft beer. Completely different recipes. I'm just trying to frame it a little bit. Like if there was a standard of craft beer, I'd definitely be saying this is a candidate. It's not trying to be showy. It's just, yeah, you know, they sell it a bit on the can, but they've got to. No, I, I, I'm noticing the dryness and the bitterness more than the, the florals, though. I've got to be honest. But I suppose that's what they mean by robust, you know. So it it definitely reminds me of a, a more traditional IPA. You're getting that dryness and bitterness on the back end. And I mean an English-style IPA, because it was literally going to India. That's what this reminds me of, if you're into that flavour. Dry, bitter, then fruity. Yeah, you will get the fruit notes, but you're going to get that dryness and bitterness on the back end first. And that's why I say, I'm not saying it's a bad beer, but yeah, they've for some reason it feels like they've gone a, a bit more of a traditional route. With the IPA. But they they ain't a bad thing. They ain't a bad thing. Gives it a bit of punch, but it's not super dry, you know? Sorry to crap on, but yeah, just wanted to be accurate where wherever possible. So yeah, hawkers, get amongst it. Good beer. Really nice. Really enjoyable. I don't know why the camera's being blurry today, but meh. Anyway, I think I'm going to get ready to go into town and uh, get this paperwork sorted out and, uh, yeah. Might, might do some shopping on the way home. Might not. Don't know. <laughs> anyway, stay distinctive. Stay classy. Behave yourselves. If you're going to be naughty, be good at it. All right? <laughs> I'll see you soon.